Gang, stop is Charles Gang. And just in case you ain't heard of me, they told me it was too late. But I promise that I'll be the first to speak. Most of these rappers, they fake. But you can't have your way to St. Burke here. Everybody said it won't be. Till they see smooth, then they realize they'd rather have turkey me. What it do, what it do. It's 903 Box, and I'm your host, Charles Jack. Say, man, shout out to my audience. Shout out to those that rocking with me. And yeah, we back in the kitchen. There's a whole lot of goddamn sauce in this pot, man. Let's get to the shit. Terrence Crawford is flexing on Earl Spence. Flexing. Now, when I say flexing, some may misinterpret that. Uh, I mean, misinterpret. <laughs> uh, it's not necessarily in a bad way. But he flexing. I'm not finna uh, cover that shit up or none of that. He flexing on Earl. Flex, big flexing. And his whole team flexing. Uh, yeah. Is it rightfully so? Hmm. I don't know. Um, uh, before I get to that shit, uh, heard some shit to make the hair on the back of my goddamn neck stand up. Lena Ellaby, um, you been quiet. I guess Tank finna, uh, he in negotiations or finna get a fight signed. Cause that's the only time you talk. <laughs> yeah, the only time you talk these days is when there's some shit going on with Tank. Um, yeah, shout out to you, uh, for giving Jamil Cholo a chance against Canelo and all that there. Um, the great Canelo. Oh, uh, you said you'd like to see Terrence Crawford fight Jerome Bruce and his next. Oh, uh, and I guess they were saying some shit like, but, you know, Boots right now, he working his way up. He really don't, he ain't got no belt, none of that. Um, and Lena LB was like, I mean, but he deserve a shot. He deserve a shot. Terrence Crawford should give him a shot. Six months ago, this same Lena LB, bro, <clears throat> when they asked you about Devin Haney or Shakur, <clears throat> when they asked you about Devin Haney or Shakur, you said, when they asked you about Devin, you said, belts do not matter. Uh, he brings nothing to the table. Uh, we don't even want them belts. You said Shakur don't sell. Uh, he don't bring nothing to the table. I remember this. You've been saying it for years. Whenever they bring up Devin Haney or Shakur, you say they bring nothing to the table. Um... Uh, but when it ain't your fighter, you can be fair. Uh, I said a long time ago, if shit was real, yeah, Terrence Crawford would give Ennis a shot after the rematch. I said I said if shit was real. But I said, I understand if Terrence Crawford don't give him a shot. It ain't he ducking. He just doing what every other black fighter do or every other fighter do when they'll star. Not just black, just any fighter. When they'll star, they fight who they want. And fans put up with that shit. So, I'm not finna ask uh, Crawford to do some shit that fighters haven't been doing. I'm not gonna criticize him for not giving Boots a shot when every other fighter do the same shit. So, it's nice to know that Leonard Ellaby can be fair when it ain't his fighter. But if you ask him today about Tank versus anybody black, he gonna say, what do they bring to the table? <laughs> you know, uh, once again, nobody knew who Isaac Cruz was until after the fight. Nobody knew him before that fight, bro. Anyway, um, another breaking news. Keith Thurman. Because I feel like Terrence Crawford, he shitted on Danny and Keith and said, I'll never give you a shot. And they said, you motherfuckers dug me. And I believe both of them dug. Especially, especially Danny. Because Keith claimed he was hurt most of Danny really ducked us, uh, Crawford. I remember every time they would ask him about Crawford. Danny did not want that fight. Danny Garcia did not want that fight. And I'm going to say this, in my opinion, uh, that's why I give Earl a lot of credit. Earl is the only fighter that I've ever seen break Danny. He broke him, broke him, broke him, broke him, broke the spirit of him, bro. You ain't never seen Danny not trying to win. Spence, Spence beat the wheel out of him, in my opinion. And he ain't, and he ain't what he had, one fight since? But anyway, um, so... I definitely think Danny ducked him. I don't think Kent, uh, Keith 
uh, Double E with the F was too interested in fighting Bud. But also, um, Keith Thurman said, you didn't really be the champion, which I don't agree with that. Spence is a champion or was a champion. But you were like, uh, he said, that version of uh, Spence don't even beat Sean Porter. He said, if I had been in the ring that night with, with that version of Spence, uh, I would have destroyed him. And he said, if I was in the ring with you that night, I would have destroyed you. Um, Which leads me to say this, bro. Uh, you know, a lot of people get mad when I say it, bro. Um, I don't know what Spence was going through. I don't know what happened. But I just know that that version that spent uh of of that that fought Terrence Crawford that night would have lost to Ugas. Would have lost to Danny. Would have lost to Sean Porter, in my opinion. Um <clears throat> Which leads me to say this. Now Terrence Crawford will fight any version of Earl Spence. I don't think he's scared, scared of him in any kind of way. Uh but I think his team knows some shit. I think his team know that, uh, you know how you kind of get away with some shit? You know, you kind of, you hit a lick and it go a little smoother than you thought. <laughs> and it just seemed too easy. You ever did some shit that felt too easy? Uh, that's how that fight was. Terrence Crawford even said it. I wasn't expecting this shit. <laughs> Terrence Crawford was in dog shape. He was ready to go blow for blow if he had to. That's the kind of shape he was in. Never seen Bud rip like that, especially uh, uh, stomach-wise. He was ripped. Abs ripped. And you could tell he had really, really been training hard. Um, he was prepared to go to war. And make no mistake about it, it ain't Bud's fault, and Bud deserved full credit. In my opinion, I think that Bud team feel like... Because, and it ain't no no scary, because your team, just like Spence team, it's it, Spence team may not even want to take the rematch because you think of the safety of your fighter. You think of your fighter's best interest first. Same with Bud. I think they think that, uh, I don't know, we got away with a pretty easy one. Uh, you know, at 154, I don't know, Spence might, you know, um, it may be a different fight. I don't know, and, and I and I think that it's even people on Bud team that want him to just move on from that shit. You gotta you you beat him, don't even go back through that shit. You know what I'm saying? And it's some that feel like that that may feel like Bud gonna do the same shit. But it's some that feel like bro, Spence gonna come out a different fighter in that rematch, and we may not be prepared for what he may bring. I, I, I'm just being real, bro, because nobody talks about that. I, I, I'm so It's the times we living in bro I just know that that same energy Was not there when Canelo Lost every round to Bilbo That energy was not It was more of a It was more of a cry for you You know Jodeci cry for you It was some shit like that No Canelo don't go fight him again He was just too big They never said he was too skilled Because he is more skilled than Canelo Nobody never said that <coughs> Or it's going to be the same shit. He can't fuck with Bivol. No, that's not what they said. They said Bivol was too big. And no need to look down on yourself. You still the pound for pound king. And you still the face of boxing. And you dare it to be great. You just lost. And he was just too big. That's what they said. That was the excuse. And they begged him not to go to the rematch. Um, yeah, like I said, he was just too big for you. And you need to just go back down to 168. That was the whole cry. Uh, it's just not the same energy. Nobody shitted on Canelo for losing. They didn't shit on... They said he dared to be great. The energy ain't the same for Spence. Ain't nobody... I ain't heard not one person say, Spence dared to be great, though. I ain't heard it, bro. Because it ain't the... It's been a clowning thing. It's been a whole... The energy is different. Energy is different because when a black fighter involved in anything, it's going to be some mess. It's going to be some drama. It's going to be another black op. And it's going to be another black fan base that's against. It's going to be some monkey shit. But it wasn't that with Canelo. And I'm going to tell you another thing. If Canelo lose to Jamel Charlo, they not going to say, no, we don't want to see the rematch. You know, nobody, they, they never band together. Stephen A. Skip, none of them band together and say, man, uh, I do not want to see a Canelo Bilbo rematch. Bilbo is just a much better fighter. 
They didn't do it like that. They said it like it was too big. But anyway, um, him right now, um, you know, I don't know. I'm just on one side. I feel, but listen, bro, you're getting the credit you finally deserve. I feel you, bro. Uh, you know, you done went on a worldwide tour. You've been on every platform. Uh, just seen you early. You was hooping and shit. They say Bud Cole on that court, though. On, on me. And motherfuckers say Bud Cole on that court. But uh, he's just a hell of an athlete. A motherfucker a wrestler, too. Uh, yeah. You getting your credit, bro, but you flexing. And I don't know if it's your team or if it's you. Because Bud, Bud a dog to me, bro. But I just think his team is trying to move him more, a little more careful, bro. Because I think they think that at 154, Spence could be more of a problem. I'm hearing that uh, Bud going to keep his belts. And it's going to be uh, either at 147 or some kind of catch weight or some shit like that. I don't think Bud will put a rehydration clause on Spence. I don't think he'll do that shit at all. I don't, I don't think that at all. I don't think Bud is really looking for an advantage. Bud just want to fight. But his team... Uh, like I said, your team, bro, wants your best interest. So if they got to maneuver and do shit so you'll be in a better position. Uh, now, make no mistake about it. Another thing I want to say. Terrence Crawford is the A-side at this point. He deserves to be the A-side. He's asking for more money, and you goddamn right he deserves it. Yeah, I'm going to fight for you on that. Uh, Al, just like your... Uh, goat mouth, rooster mouth, uh, rooster neck ass, uh, off of Canelo, $178 million. <laughs> Your ass, you let it be known, bro. Y'all got plenty of money over there. So break the bank and uh, throw them another 20 mil or some shit. I'm all for it. I'm all for it. And pay Spence more. Yeah, that's what I think. Yeah, um, that's what I think. So I think uh, making more money is well deserved. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with negotiating more money. Uh, but I'm just gonna say this. Just gonna say it, and I'm gonna get out this motherfucker. Um, uh, uh, Turner Crawford, I heard you, bro. You see, I listen to interviews. Uh, I don't miss much. <laughs> I be hearing you, bro. You big as shit. Uh, you were bigger than Spence that night. <laughs> Real shit. Terrence Crawford was bigger than Earl that night. On me, bro. That's why I'm saying on fight night. I just want you to look at any other Earl Spence fight on fight night. Earl big. Earl was not big on fight night against Crawford. He was not big. His face was thin as shit. And his head looked much bigger because when, when you thin, your head looked big. Earl Spence's head looked big as shit. Uh, anyway, but um, turns big. He a big ass welterweight. He done filled up. And he even said it. He said, man, it's tough making welterweight. And he said this camp, it was really tough. And he ready to move to 154 because it's so tough. And he, he said, I don't know if I can make the weight again. He said, man, it's hard making wealth away. And I believe I done grew out of it. So, saying that to say, fighting at 154 wouldn't be a strain for Bud. It'd be more convenient for both of them. So, that's why I say I think it's his team that don't want the 154 and they want the catch weight. Because I just think they think that uh, at 154, Spence would be more dangerous. But on the flip side, I'm going to say this and I'm off this motherfucker. I can talk about the weight. I can talk about your head looked at much bigger and your body was smaller. I can say all that shit, bro. Uh, they can say, they people say you was on some uh, sour diesel, uh, some gummy bears, all kind of shit, bro. I just don't know. Uh, and I don't have no proof of that shit. <laughs> but I'm just going to say this, bro. Uh, whether it was weight drain, whatever it was, because something was wrong. But overall... I think you and Coach Derrick James completely underestimated Terrence Crawford. Completely. Completely. Even through the build-up, the way uh, Spence was talking. Because Spence talked through the whole fight as if... Because I even think, even at 154, bro, just because you stronger and bigger, that don't win you the fight. I never thought Spence would completely depend on his strength and his endurance as a way to win. Because to be Crawford, you got to be more strategic. Uh, it's more than just being strong. It's more than being powerful. It's more than that. Um, and I think he completely depended on being bigger and just bullying uh, Bud. I think that was the com that was no plan B. 
There was no plan B, and I blame him and Derrick James. Derrick James is completely underestimated, but I'm going to keep saying it. That's why he ain't going to never live that shit. The way he looked at Bud after that fight, everybody saw that shit. He looked at Bud like he had seen the ghost. He was shocked. He couldn't believe it. Like, Derrick James act like Bud wasn't punching. He really, because I never heard throughout the buildup, Spence or Derrick James never talked about the power of Terrence Crawford. Like, bro, I don't know why y'all thought that shit was capped. Terrence Crawford to stop anybody at welterweight, bro. Or at 154. Like, I don't know what the fuck you motherfucker was thinking. But I tell you what, that was the most valuable lesson you learned, bro. You underestimated the pound for pound king of boxing. You completely underestimated him. So no matter what was going on mentally or outside the ring, if you had some family problems, that shit don't matter. You completely underestimated your your opponent on the biggest night of your life. You completely underestimated him. You didn't train properly. You didn't prepare yourself mentally or none of that shit. And that's something you and your coach got to learn from. But don't get it twisted. I still think Derrick James is the best coach in boxing. That shit is not no cap. But we all learn from moments, bro. Uh, everybody has underestimated somebody in your lifetime. So it's just a lesson learned. I'm telling you right now, though, Spence. And another key factor, I'm going to keep saying this. Of course, you're going to have to use your ring, Aki. You're going to have to think. You're going to have to think more and not just depend on the body work. The body work, I wouldn't even focus so much on that because Crawford's counters when you duck down low like that, it's, it's just dangerous. <laughs> You know, I wouldn't throw too many jabs uh, to the body like that. I'd, I'd stay up top a little bit and work little hooks here and there to the body. But also, the power of Earl Spence. When Earl Spence's power is relevant, bro, it's a problem. And his power was a non-factor in that fight. When, when Spence's power is there, the fight can change, bro. Spence got the kind of power that can change a fight. Just like Bud got power that can change a fight, Spence also has power that can change a fight. Because I had a lot of people in my comment section uh, the last time I talked about Spence power. It's like, Spence power overrated and Spence really don't punch like... Bro, Spence punch hard as shit. Ain't nobody ever done that to Ugas. Nobody. He broke his fucking face, bro. He broke Kell Brook of the eye. <laughs> uh... He beat the shit out of Danny, bro. Ain't nobody ever beat Danny up like that. Danny has never been the same since losing to Spence. And Danny got a granny chin, but Spence hurt him several times. That motherfucker power, it's a factor. But like I said, uh, it just... Shit, you're going to have to get ready for Bud. I'm telling you that now. And you know, at least you know that now. Um... Yeah, but Terrence Crawford, he he flexing. Uh, I don't know how to. This may just be some propaganda or some shit. But um, if it ain't at one fifty four or whatever, whatever it is, bro, it's all on Spence, bro. You got if it's at one forty seven, you got to make that weight again, bro. And I think you need to be in training camp right now. But he may be training right now. But whatever Bud say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's what it is. That's how I feel. I feel like since Bud won the fight, I, I feel like he should have more of the say-so in the rematch. I agree with him on that. And I, and I believe you should make more money. I believe you should make more money. I think you should um, control most of the negotiations. And I think they need to put a little more respect on your name. Because I feel like PBC did disrespect you. They disrespected your value and all that shit. So, yeah, flex on them, bro. I ain't mad at you at all for flexing on them. This is 903 Boxing. I'm your host, Joel J. With that, I'm out.